Good day. I wanted to go over uh, chapter one, in particular in our course, just to get you started. And here we go. Uh, by the way, this is our textbook. It is um, a digital copy. We're using Cengage MindTap. Now, Cengage is the publisher of MindTap, or the labs. And actually, there, it's a company called Practice Labs from Ireland that uh, has developed uh, the core technology for the labs. And that way, our labs are consistent. And that's why it's required that you purchase the Cengage MindTap resources. Anyway, there's the ISBN 10 and the 13. The resources bundled with the lab has a different ISBN number. And I went ahead and, and posted that in our course. So let's get started. Just a quick overview. Uh, for chapter one, it's entitled Understanding uh, the Digital Forensics Profession. And uh, just a little bit more about in some investigations, so we're starting to step into it. Now, um, as someone who uses forensics tools all the time, I can tell you um, this course, and perhaps even the second course, is just a prelude, if you will, to digital forensics, computer forensics, cyber forensics, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, but I tell you, there is a rich pool of requirements for digital forensics investigators, whether it's in the cybersecurity area or um, for a what I affectionately call a cop shop or private investigations or even governmental items, which I do quite a bit. Uh, some of the objectives in the chapter is really a description of the digital forensics field. Um, I had posted some information and I'll continue to post information about AI blockchain, other technologies that cyber forensics investigators need to understand. Um, the second bullet down, explain how to prepare computer investigations and summarize the difference between public and private sector investigations. Now, uh, there's a, uh, the public sector investigations may have a different, and they do have a different level of what needs to be uh, ascertained, if you will, from the investigation versus private sector, depending on what you're doing. Uh, the bar may not be raised as high, if you will. Uh, professional conduct. Uh, <laughs> quite frankly, as a digital forensics investigator, I get to work uh, in a you know, really kind of cool office environment. Uh, and uh, But when I do go to court, I end up being an expert witness as well. And certainly in the court setting, you have to present yourself pretty well. So that, it, the book talks a bit about that. I think it's more professional conduct over general uh, describe how to pre prepare for an investigation uh, by taking a systematic approach. Bottom line is, as we all probably can guess, we don't want to charge into a crime scene or if we're doing some sort of internal investigation for an organization or working for uh, um, a private entity, a lawyer, if you will. We have to plan everything out. We want to make sure that there's a solid chain of custody. And I tell you, when you do get into court, you're going to be hammered on that chain of custody quite a bit. And so that's a big part of it, is tracking it. And a lot of people like to just jump in and get things done. The case can be severely compromised if that is done without any planning. Um, uh, some software. Uh, I use some software that's, that's customized. And I also use other software that's generalized, if you will, out on the market, if you will. So we'll be digging into the more common tools in this course. I think it'd be a lot of fun. The hands-on are fun. Nice thing about the labs, uh, it was before that I would set up a whole bunch of virtual instances and something would break and I'd have to go fix it. But these you can restart and run from the top um, as many times as you want. Summarize how to conduct an investigation, including critiquing a case. Now, you have to be very professional and provide a certain um, track, if you will, for how you collect evidence. And it may vary depending on the organization you're working for. You are allowed, as an expert, to provide your own opinions at the end of the report, but in the whole body of the report, it's just facts. You can put your observations at the end. Um, some companies uh, may not want that observation, so you have to work with it. You know. Anyway, uh, just a quick overview, digital forensics, and this spans into, the definition in the book is the application of computer science and investigative procedures. So we've got that overlap. But really, the, on the computer science, the technology side, it's expanding. It's getting just so crazy um, in terms you can specialize in cell phones. You can specialize in blockchain. You can specialize in, you know, pick your specialization. So it's a very rich 
rich area that I think you'll you'll enjoy if you decide to stay on. By, besides being a digital forensics expert, you can hang your own shingle. You can be a, 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 a expert witness in the court. And if you look around in your state, you can see the varied rates that an expert witness charges. For example, it's not uncommon that an expert witness charges 250 to 400 an hour, depending on their background. Digital forensics experts uh, get paid quite well. Um, or you can go out and hang your shingle and do your own gig as well. So we'll be exploring a little bit of that as well in this course. We're going to look at federal rules of evidence. And uh, we're going to also look at the computer analysis and response team. We're going to look at that. A, a bit of a blurb in Chapter 1 about that. And also the uh, Department of Defense Computer Forensics Laboratory, which I work closely with, um, with the uh, Defense Intelligence Agency as well. So the Fourth Amendment, read that through. You may already are familiar with it. Uh, everyone's rights to search and seizure. But that's the foundation of what we're up to. By the way, I'm glancing over here at the slide previews. Okay, we're not going through the whole set of slides available for the course. I just want to get you kind of warmed up. But these three slides in here, I'm just going to uh, touch on a couple of items. Collecting the data securely. And uh, that means getting the nod if you're working for a, a, a police department or some sort of investigative agency. The key investigator will give you the nod on uh, when to acquire that data. You'll work with him or her over the collection of data, the evidence, so you're not compromising other evidence at a crime scene, for example. Uh, examining the suspect data, again, we're going to talk about a really strict methodology that you, you will use. Um, other, for example, when you do get in an organization like DOD or a police department like a large police department like uh, LA or the Phoenix Police Department, etc., there's certain methods beyond uh, what the standard processes are uh, that they'll want you to do. Uh, digital forensics is much different than data recovery. We're not even going, we're not going to do data recovery unless um, our working copy of the evidence was somehow mishandled. And then we have to document that whole nine yards. So we're going to get into that. We're going to work with a bit copy of an image, if you will, of a um, um, suspect's cell phone, uh, the computer, what have you, in order to uh, ascertain. So we make a copy of that. We never work on the original, of course. This triangle is common. You'll see this in every book. Uh, the vulnerability, threat assessment, and risk management. And in fact, that's where this that whole cyber, cybersecurity realm pokes right into that area as well. But we're going to look at risk management, the threat assessment, and how that really is impacted on digital forensics. On the right-hand side, we see network intrusion detection. Um, we have NIDs, we have HIDs, we have all kinds of intrusion detection that kind of alert us to something being fishy done on the network. And the bottom line, the foundation is digital investigations. Now, I can talk almost ad nauseum about <laughs> Um, um, investigations for servers or networks or blockchain, what have you. So again, each one of those is a foundational component with digital investigations that you'll get with this course. And just keep in mind that you'll have certain branches and hopefully this will be a, a major or certain strong interest of yours or maybe a career goal of yours. We'll keep in, that in mind as well. Uh, this last slide here and then we'll do a quick summary Vulnerability, threat assessment, risk management, network NIDs, network detection, excuse me, and digital investigations. We covered that. But they, um, there's a little more verbiage in our text. So bottom line, uh, here's what we're up to. We already chatted a bit about history of DF, kind of, but a little more depth in the book. Kind of gives you context. Case law. Here's where the intersection is. Uh, digital forensics resources. I'll share out more throughout the course. Preparing for investigations. Law enforcement enforcement versus private digital forensics investigations. Uh, there's a lot of different variations there. You can talk about public versus private and professional conduct. Overview of computer crime. There's a whole list of what constitutes a computer crime. And I'll poke out some uh, references during the course that you can see. It's even things like um, it, there's a difference between computer crime and compliance, but there is an intersection there as well. So we'll chat a bit about that uh, later on in the course. Systematic approach, again, the methodology is key because it's going to be hammered on by either 
uh, the opposing counsel, if you will, especially if you're going to court. Uh, case types, things like um, a, a bit of narrative about employee termination, that's pretty common. Internet abuse, email abuse. If you're doing uh, digital forensics for, let's say, a ransomware attack, so you want to find out who actually captured that, and, it, and who knows. By the way, a lot of the exfiltration of data from large companies is really an inside job. So a lot of times I'm doing that kind of work, DOD. So attorney-client pri privilege, we'll chat about that. Industrial espionage, workstation software. We're going to get into a whole litany of hardware types. I'll even add more um, as well. Uh, Bitstream copies versus what an image copy is. We'll talk about that in the chat room. Um, also analyzing evidence. And by the way, when I say chat room, I mean more like the discussion forum. And a good, and I keep emphasizing this, a good portion of this course is really jumping in on the discussions and really chewing in on that. Because I tell you, I learn, I learn a lot from you and you learn from each other. We all learn from each other in the, the discussion room. I learn new things every semester. Um, so let's keep that in mind. It's really important. We're not just not going to chew this stuff out and puke it in a different form. That's, that's really not that good. Uh, so we're going to use the discussions, and I do lean heavy on it. It's my professional opinion that that's how we learn the best because I, I've had, uh, I've been doing this for quite a while, and I know what what the ropes are. So I'd like to ask for us to really dig in on the discussions. Can I emphasize that more? <laughs> anyway, uh, a couple of summary slides. You'll see this in your slide deck. Um, public sector, private sector. Look at that in particular. Um, always use a systematic approach. We're going to keep hammering on that. Chain of custody on this last bullet is a key aspect. And last but not least, things like the bitstream copy, bit by bit duplicate, uh, that needs to be logged into evidence. If you're setting up your own private practice at one point in time, you'll need the facilities and the security uh, because when you go into court, again, somebody's going to hammer at every little nook and cranny that you've done on the investigation. And even if the investigation was spot on and caught the bad guy, uh, if, if ancillary items like chain of custody, the way you secure things uh, are not effective, the case will be severely compromised. I've seen that over way too many times. So that's the emphasis. So anyway, I hope this quick overview uh, gets you going. Welcome to the course. And I'm looking for you <laughs> forward to us in the discussion questions as well. Take care. Bye now.